people often ask me, hey, Sticks, what do you think of this gotcha game? Tower of Fantasy, Punishing Grey Raven, Azure Lane, Genshin Impact, and it gave me an idea. You know what I could do? I could do a comprehensive tier list of every single gotcha game I have played. Ranking games from UR tier all the way down to N. The best gotcha games that I have played all the way down to the worst. This right here is my ultimate gotcha tier list. And I'm genuinely curious if you guys can relate. If you guys feel much the same way. I know this is probably gonna trigger a few people out there that believe their gotcha game is superior to all other gotcha games. But at the end of the day, this list is purely subjective. And we're all welcome to have our own opinions, our own thoughts on games, our own likes and dislikes. That's part of what makes a community that community. Now, I, I do wanna know, this was actually done on stream with our community. We do stuff like this all the time. I urge you to come on over, join us here. We stream every single weekend. Now let's go ahead, take a look at this list. It's a lot of gotcha games. It is not released this year. They are gotcha games that I have played within the last year. So we're gonna go tackle this alphabetically. We're gonna start with Ether Gazer, which is something I played in the last few months. Ether Gazer, very beautiful game, great action combat. Admittedly, I do not remember literally any of the story whatsoever the story the narrative in ether gazer i know this might upset some people but was not very memorable to me i would say ether gazer was probably i wish there was something in between sr and r but i feel like ether gazer would probably be an sr quality gotcha game to me then we have alchemy stars alchemy stars i don't know i feel like i i i i did not enjoy alchemy stars very much I just, I played it for, I think a few days, which might not be enough to really accurately gauge the kind of game it is, but I don't think it's horrible. I just think it is something that never really caught my attention or retained my attention long-term. Place Ether Gazer into N. I would place Ether Gazer or not Ether Gazer, Alchemy Stars in probably in the R category. Then we have Arknights. Arknights is probably both one of the most complex, but also most fun, engaging strategy games I've played. Very, at times, convoluted story that has way too much text for what is trying to be told. I think beautiful waifus, very well thought out mechanics, great quality game overall. I wish it was fully voice acted, but it's not. I'd say, Arc Knights is probably an SSR quality gacha game. This is my favorite gacha game, period. I will note that. But just because it's my favorite does not mean that it's necessarily, you know, the, the pinnacle of quality in terms of gaming. Then we have Artery Gear. Artery Gear is a game that I actually had some fun with. I did. It was a chibi game, had some kind of cute character models, repetitious combat didn't require much engagement from from you as a player i don't really have much more to say about it because that pretty much sums up the kind of game it is i'd say that's about our quality not you are yeah i wouldn't think you are either arknights is really good do not enjoy the stamina system i i do not ever have issues with stamina because i have a vip so <laughs> next up is azure lane azure lane is arguably one of the most free to play friendly gacha games imaginable you can literally obtain everything every waifu without having to spend a single set that is almost unheard of and unthinkable for a gacha game it has some of the most stunning waifus in gacha its gameplay is fairly basic you you know use your thumb to move your waifus around its story is decent I might upset some people by not saying the story's great, but I believe the story in Azure Lane's pretty decent. For a gacha game, that's that's probably a compliment, if I'm being honest. I think Azure Lane is definitely an SSR tier gacha. They're very generous. I would almost actually say Azure Lane would be a UR gacha, if only it was a little bit more engaging in terms of combat. If the gameplay required you do more, I would have totally had Azure Lane be a UR quality gacha 
but because the gameplay is a little bit limited i feel like ssr like if there's a medium between ssr and ur that would be azure lane 100 percent next up we have blue archive blue archive is a a pretty decent decently friendly gotcha game in terms of free to play friendliness i wouldn't say it offers you the same kind of friendliness that that azure lane provides you blue archive is also fairly auto play in terms of your your characters kind of like they deploy themselves they run they make cover of things you click your abilities and stuff it is actually very complex it requires a lot of micromanagement of your teams their their affinities like the, the weapon types it's crazy how deep and complex blue archive is it also has really great looking character models it does actually have a pretty good narrative as well i'd say blue archive would definitely also be an ssr gotcha definitely i don't think it's as it would be like a i i don't think i'd ever classify it as a ur gotcha but it's definitely ssr hands down brown dust 2 is a gotcha game that i played a lot of i think i played like 20 or 30 hours of over a four or five day period it's a turn-based jrpg inspired gotcha game that is also very free to play friendly i believe when i played it beautiful wife who's actually surprisingly good story good turn-based combat fun world to explore there's almost nothing that i can say that, that i think was a negative for this other than the fact that everything was just really good but nothing was exceptional nothing was incredible or great i would definitely say brown dust 2 would be an ssr gotcha 2 is Blue Archive turn-based? No, Blue Archive is not turn-based at all. All the cute anime faces and then Rage Shadow Legend. <laughs> I mean, there's also Diablo 2 there, right? Next is Counterside. Counterside was kind of a fun game. It was like a horizontal kind of game where your characters just kind of like bum rush the other, the enemies, you just kind of like move back and forth. Had some decent character models, kind of mid gameplay. Nothing to explore. You know, not exceptional voice act, not exceptional music. I'd feel like Counter Side's definitely an R quality gotcha game. Wasn't really that good, I don't think. Dawnlands. Dawnlands is something I played, I think, about two weeks ago. Graphically, it's okay. The story, like, there was a story in Dawnlands? The gotcha friendliness. Dude, I would need to sell a kidney on the black market to be able to afford anything in that game. The gameplay think Genshin Impact, Tower of Fantasy, or Zelda, but, you know, done, like, like, the, the, we have that gameplay at home meme. There's literally not a single positive good thing I can say about, on, about Dawnlands. That is the first N-tier quality gotcha in this list, and I know it's gonna upset a few people. Uh, lower tier just for Dawnlands. <laughs> there might not be any other N-tier quality gotchas here, you don't know. Next up, we have uh, Destiny Child. That is a game that is shutting down, sadly. Has some of the most, uh, some of the biggest personalities in gacha gaming. Very lewd, very uh, expressive characters. But otherwise, a relatively repetitious kind of auto game that really didn't require much of you. Didn't have really much in terms of narrative. Like, it had a narrative, but the narrative was just like, hey, I'm like the demon king. I'm trying to be the demon king or something. I don't know. I, I try to block the story from memory. I'd say Destiny Child is probably like a, an R tier quality game. But kudos for them making a like an 18 plus version of the game for players that were interested in no censorship at all. Diablo Immoral. Yeah, Diablo Immoral, definitely down there in N tier. There was nothing redeeming about that for me. Dislight. Dislight was actually, it's a turn-based gotcha that kind of has this like weird, like semi-urban, semi like Egyptian god style setting. It is very weird. It has surprisingly good voice acting, has a decent narrative, some pretty good combat. I would say, if anything, dislike I, I don't know about the the friendliness free to play friendliness for gotcha but i played it for about five days and it was a very fun game i'd say it's probably an sr quality gotcha i agree about diablo being trash <laughs> at least i got blood knight instead of diablo <laughs> oh god all right uh devil may cry peak of combat another gotcha i played recently this is an absolute abomination of a game that should not hold the devil may cry name this is one of the worst gotcha games i've ever played easy end to your quality nothing good about it they took what devil may cry does well and they thought to themselves you know what we should do the exact opposite you know the good combat from devil may cry let's let, i wonder what would happen if we made the combat shit you know the characters personalities i wonder what would happen if we removed them and replaced them with generic personalities from people that haven't 
played the game. Absolute fucking shit show. Abomination of a game. Then we have Epic 7. Epic 7 is admittedly a pretty fun game, or it was when I played it two times ago. The most recent time I played it was actually very easy. I think they overhauled it and made it much easier. The narrative in Epic 7 is pretty decent. The, the gameplay is pretty decent. Some of the waifus are insane looking, like the white haired chick you see in the intro. Woo. I'd say Epic 7 probably, I feel like it it's more engaging and requires more from you to play. It's not, it's not like too autoplay. I feel like Epic 7 is definitely an SR quality. Gotcha. Yeah. Eversoul. Eversoul is, it got released in January of 2023. So earlier this year, that's an idle game, if I recall, with. Holy crap, levels of waifu. The narrative for uh, for Eversoul was something along the lines of uh, you came from a butthole in the sky. This hot queen saved you. She was like making out with some some god or something. or And then you're like, you're like poofed into existence and they just threw themselves at you. So the story was, it was fine. Gameplay for an idle game was basic. Characters, graphics, everything were good. I'd say Eversoul is probably an SR quality gacha. I wish it had like a full voice acting. I think it had some voice acting, right? Epic 7, you get a lot of content for your time. The actual content you need is limited. Epic 7 does do a good job of presenting you with a lot of things to do. Hands down. Next up, we have Evertail. Evertail markets itself as being the Pokemon MMO. Like you could search for Evertail ad on YouTube and you'll see it's literally they advertise using fake Pokemon advertising and it is horrible. They are scumbag devs with a very, very below mid tier quality game. And I would immediately put that in the end tier. Hands down, no question. Then we have Fate Grand Order. Fate Grand Order is a very manual game. It's not a game you can just set to auto combat. So the game you can skip through. It has a very deep, deep narrative, a lot of story, a lot of backstory for tons of different characters. The combat has a, an interesting uh, like rock, paper, scissors like mechanic. It's it's honestly a very good quality game. It, it's no surprise the game made 50 something million dollars this month. I feel like fake Grand order. Admittedly, I do skip some of the. I have skipped some of the story because at times it's just there's, there's way too much. And I do wish there was an auto feature in the game, but generally I think fake grand order is easily an SSR tier quality. I don't think it's UR quality, but definitely an SSR tier game. 100% manual hardcore for newbies. It is, yeah. Then we have Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact, I feel like if I don't put this in the UR quality category, Genshin Impact players are gonna be real upset with me. So Genshin Impact, easily the, 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 like, the, the most beautiful world to explore in a gacha game, Genshin Impact. It doesn't have the best combat in a, in, a, in a gacha game. That, I think, is reserved for Punishing Grey Raven. It has incredibly beautiful character models. It has a very good narrative. There are a lot of aspects that are very positive about Genshin. I hate the artifact grind. That is an abhorrent experience. I think that it lacks endgame, but I think everyone knows that. So easily SSR quality. I don't think it's a UR quality game, and I know that's going to upset some people see then we have girls frontline i admittedly i didn't enjoy girls frontline that much i don't know there's just something about it. It, it it took too long the battles took too long i feel like my heroes were never very strong it's just something i never really got into good looking characters though uh the story was okay i don't know this is gonna upset some people but i just girls frontline 2 looks incredible but girls frontline 1 was kind of just average to me why even add the ur tier because there is one gotcha game there that i will add i will add one gotcha game to the ur tier your wallet was weak right that is the issue i had i'm so sorry wow you're 100 right then we have guardian tales guardian tales is easily arguably has one of the like is one of the five gotcha games with the best stories in gotcha Period. Hands down. You might hate the game for any number of reasons, but the story is not one of them. Guardian Tales is one of the quirkiest, most unique, sarcastic gacha games with a story that doesn't take itself remotely serious. It's a game that requires you actually play it. You actually hit things with your weapons. You aim with your abilities. This is an SSR tier quality game easily. Good looking game. Great narrative. Great combat. Really, I really can't ask for more from that game. Now, before we rank the rest of the games in this list, 
want to take a moment here to thank our incredible patrons over on Patreon to allow for me to continue to do videos like this every single day. You guys are freaking legends. Next is Honkai Impact 3rd, which is this one. I was about to hover over the March 7th. And I was like, wait, no, no. So I've actually, I've, I've poured 40 hours in a Honkai Impact in the last two months. And I can say the story in Honkai Impact is actually like the, the beginning of it is not that great. But as I've continued to play through it, it has gotten a lot better. The game has gotten so, like literally changed so much. And, and it was very unexpected because I went into this not expecting that much, given it, it makes a lot less money than Genshin and Star Rail. So I figured maybe people just didn't like enjoy it as much, but I don't know. The, the combat in Honkai is very good. I don't think it's like as fast or as good as Punishing Grey Ravens as an example, but character models are really good. The narrative is good. The combat is good. The exploration of areas is fun. I don't think I get nearly as many gems in the game as I would want because I haven't been able to do all that many pulls, but I feel like Honkai Impact is definitely an SSR tier, maybe between SR and SSR because I think it is, it is pretty good but not like really good or exceptional like some of the other games. Kiana starter arcs are really bad once you leave the school. Does, yeah, that's exactly, exactly. It continues to get better the more you play it, which is crazy. Higan Arathol is next. Higan Arathol is a turn-based gacha from what I recall. Decent looking character models, pretty mid combat, very, very boring story. I played it for two days and I was like, I can't play this anymore. Easily an R tier quality gacha game. I think it's making like a couple hundred K right now, monthly. It's going to shut down the next few months. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Or is it sad? Then Idoli Pride. Idoli Pride is essentially an idol game. Like you literally, you watch your characters work out and dance, and then you have them dance and sing. And I did a video on this and it kept getting demonetized because all the things they were doing were licensed and repeatedly got uh, got my channel copyright claimed or the, the video for the channel copyright claimed made it very difficult covering it. But you literally did nothing in that game. Like actually did nothing. You just watched your waifus. So that was it. It was a watch, watch a, you know, schoolgirls dance simulator. I don't know. I did not like it. I think it was a fairly bad game, but I know that is going to upset some people, but you know what? That's okay. Because idle games aren't for all of us. Then we have King's Raid. King's Raid. Pfft. King's Raid had a decent story, some decent gameplay, some good looking waifus. And that's about it. <laughs> I don't know how it's staying online, but it's not a bad game. It's not a bad game. He gone, Arathol. Yeah, there we go. Then we have the Legend of Neverland. Legend of Neverland is essentially Genshin Impact. If Genshin Impact were a shit game, good looking character or decent looking characters. Let's, let's not say they're good looking. Very poor combat. Pretty world. Shit story. This is easily an, an N tier quality game because the only thing that is even remotely good about the game is the world and the world kind of just looks like Genshin if Genshin were done with a fraction of the budget. Then we have Limbus Company. Limbus Company, exceptional narrative, very deep, complex gameplay, so complex and deep that I actually didn't know what I was doing half the time. And when I did my dedicated video on it, people were like, I, I can't wait for you to get to like chapter three or four where the game actually requires some understanding of it. And I was like, oh God, I, yeah, sure. I can't wait. Oh boy. That is an easy SR quality game. I, or even an SSR quality. They're pretty friendly with their gotcha too. I feel like I, I, didn't, I really didn't have any issues with Limbus Company. It was one of the better gacha games I've played recently. Then Memento Mori, an idol gacha, very gating. Gated a lot of the game behind power, which was more difficult to obtain than I would have liked. And it was an idol game. That was it. The game had absolutely incredible music. Soundtrack was phenomenal. Good looking character models. And that was it. So I feel like, you know, it, it had two redeeming features so that immediately puts it in our quality category. Limbus is extremely free to play friendly. It's really nice. Yeah, there's a lot of things about Limbus Company that were really good, except for the drama they were embroiled in recently, right? Neural Cloud. Neural Cloud was a manual game that actually required you play it. Good looking waifus, but other than like good looking waifus and gameplay, I feel like Neural Cloud was kind of, it was, it was a bit disappointing. Its story wasn't really very engaging. I don't know. I feel like that it's an R quality game. Definitely not, definitely not above average. Then we have Nikkei. <laughs> which 
coincidentally, we happen to be playing right now. So Nikkei, Nikkei has arguably some of the best character models in gacha gaming, easily. Nikkei has full voice acting for the entire story, which is one of the best English dubs. Genshin also has an incredible dub. Uh, Honkai Star Rail also has an incredible dub. But Nikkei has one of the best dubs in gacha. It has fantastic narrative really really good story like I, I did not imagine a game that is so hyper fixated on booty and booba would be so deep and complex and then there's the gameplay itself you wouldn't think it based off of what you what you do in the first like two chapters but the more you play it the more you learn that it's not an idle game it's not an auto game and it requires you pay attention to what's going on so you don't buck up and fail so you're required to actually play the game you're required to pay attention to the game to learn the game you're required to have a certain team composition otherwise you're going to fail your missions because the boss battles are too difficult they have some incredible collabs that have gone all over they had the the recent nike one with 2b and a2 that look insane they had previously chainsaw man they're collabing with more i think anime and gaming studios than any other gacha game really out there i think nike is is, is by far and, and right don't, don't even get me started on the the soundtrack the soundtrack for nike is out of this world it is just so good the, the marketing for the game is great the, the the team seems to know exactly what we want from the game there isn't a single thing about Nikkei other than its cash shop that I think is bad because I spent $220 to obtain 2B. It's fucking horrible. But I think Nikkei is easily the, the, the gacha game here that I would put in the UR category purely based off of the fact that it has more positives than any other thing we've talked about thus far. And it has better almost everything than everything we've talked about thus far. And it has character personalities that are just out of this world. Dialogue is just so real. Yeah. Then we have Nino Kuni Cross World. This game had the potential to be so good. You have no idea. It was a beautiful game with really good looking like Studio Ghibli style character models. It had a great narrative and then all, it was all ruined with blockchain, NFT garbage and autoplay. This game had so much potential, but even if you disregard the the blockchain shit, it's it's probably an R quality game. It's still better than the, the trash down there though. Nikkei is a masterpiece, it really is. Then we have Outer Plane. Outer Plane was just the most mediocre game I've ever played. Like, I feel like they just, they went in and they were like, what's the most basic, like, ordinary gotcha you could think of and then they just built it and constructed the game around that like it is an end tier quality game there isn't a single thing i enjoyed about it it was so boring so plain and i know there's actually someone on youtube that plays outer plane and they felt offended when i said it was so bad <laughs> Then we have Punishing Grey Raven. Insane combat. Easily the best combat in the entire gacha genre. Incredible character models. Admittedly, it does have a convoluted story. There is there is way too much story when it could be much more easily summarized. It has like the narrative itself, when you get around all the fluff, is actually pretty good. The the gacha is very friendly. One of the more friendly gacha games out there. They've recently implemented uh, English dubs into the game, and the English dub is actually surprisingly good. Easily an SSR tier quality game. SSR at least, yeah. Want to play a worse version of Epic 7? Here you go, exactly. <laughs> Path to Nowhere. This is another example of, of something that was executed really well, but for whatever reason is not excelled like it should have. Path to Nowhere, beautiful game with some really good character models, phenomenal voice acting, great gameplay, great mechanics. I mean, the gotchas, I feel like the gotcha from whatever I recall was pretty, pretty, pretty average. Wasn't really very free to play friendly. I feel like this is essentially like Path to Nowhere is comparable to other strategy games that are SSR tier like Ark Knights. It's a very different game to Ark Knights, but at the same time, like it just, it deserves to be an SSR tier game. They're there's no questioning. This is one of the highest quality releases of 2022 when it released. Then we have Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is like, it is it is, it is, is incomparable to anything you've ever seen. It has the best graphics. It has the best gameplay. It has the best story, the best voice acting. It has the best everything, right? At least that's what it looks like when you watch any of their trailers on YouTube. If we're like, this is an easy UR quality game. Like, Get, Raid Shadow Legends needs to be up there in UR quality. Just look at the trailers for it. They are like some of the most cinematically appealing 
trailers of any gacha game. There's no contesting that if we're basing it purely off of the trailers, if we're basing it off of the game itself, it is an R quality game. There's nothing exceptional about it whatsoever. There's nothing even average about this game whatsoever. It's a below average quality game, and I dedicated over a week and a half to playing it. <laughs> I see a sponsored stream. No, they've offered me thousands. At one point, they offered me eight grand to do a sponsored video when I turned that down. This stream is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. They offered me eight grand. Yeah, they offered me eight grand. I said no. And they're like, why? And I was like, because my community would hate me for it. They'd make fun of me for it. And they were like, okay, I see. How about six grand? And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, we'll offer you six grand for a sponsored video. I'm like, you offered me eight grand before. Why would you offer me six grand now? And they're like, that's a good point. How about we offer you five grand? And they got progressively no lower. And now they won't pay me more than 500. And I'm like, that's the weirdest marketing tactic, like negotiating tactic I've ever seen anyone ever do. Continue to offer them less and eventually they'll submit. <laughs> what? not how you haggle it isn't i know then we have reverse 1999 reverse 1999 admittedly hasn't launched yet but i did play the most recent beta test for it one of the most beautiful gacha games i've ever played stunning character models incredible story top three narratives i've played fun gameplay inc beautiful setting i don't know if i mentioned voice acting but some of the best voice acting i've ever heard the most interesting unique characters i've ever seen there was one that was a tv a girl trapped in four different TVs. One was like a unicorn horse thing at a carousel. One was like a baseball bat. There was like a pair of underwear. Like it is the most bizarre gacha you've ever seen. But at the same time, this game excelled in almost everything. If this game is not a, a monolithic hit, I am going to be so surprised because in my opinion, Reverse 1999 is one of the few you are quality gacha games in this list, hands down. A bit too story centric for your taste, that's perfectly fine. But for someone that is a huge story buff like me, like I love a good narrative. So knowing that the narrative is actually really good kind of makes my investment into it seem worthwhile. Seven Deadly Sins Ecstasy. No, Seven Mortal Sins Ecstasy. <laughs> that was, uh, that was admittedly kind of like um destiny child i think really over sexualized hyper sexualized characters with like a kind of similar theme like demons blah 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 i feel like that was an r quality tier game it wasn't really that good didn't excel in anything Snowbreak, Snowbreak. i know tecto wouldn't agree with this if he ever gets around to watching this but <laughs> Snowbreak, i actually really enjoyed the narrative in Snowbreak, admittedly not very good the combat in Snowbreak, admittedly very good the character models in Snowbreak, very good. The diversity of actual content in Snowbreak, okay. The voice acting in Snowbreak, pretty decent. I just wish the entire game was voiced. I'd say this is an SR quality game. I put it in S, or R, sorry. R is below average. I put it in R. I don't think it's a below average gacha game. I think it's a pretty decent quality one. It's one of the few unique ones out there that are actually like a solid third person shooter. Not many gacha games offer that. Nikkei and N. Keep reverse 1999 and UR and Snowbreak and SSR. And there is hope for the list. What? Love the combat. Wish they went with a better renderer. I understand that. Then we have Honkai Star Rail. Honkai Star Rail, incredible story, incredible character models. Although, you know, like not as incredible as Nikkei. But I mean, that's obvious as to why that is. <laughs> Really nice, very aesthetically appealing world. Really good turn-based combat. Great special effects. I mean, in terms of free-to-play friendliness, I think I, it's probably fr uh, friendlier than than Genshin was at the same time. I feel like Honkai Star Rail. Like I, I would be, I would be crucified if I didn't have that in SSR. <coughs> but uh, like this is this is probably one of the few that would fall somewhere between SSR and UR quality, I think. I feel like the only thing that would make Honkai Star Rail an, a UR quality game for me is if Honkai Star Rail were open world. That's, I think, the one thing that's holding me back from, from having it become a UR tier. Then we have Summoner's War Chronicles that essentially looks like the Legend of Neverland. It's like, you know, it looks like Genshin. Uh, it, it's like kind of click, point to click um click to attack i think below average like waifu and husbando character models uh it, it's an r tier quality game it, it's not really very good it was fun but there wasn't really much about like there wasn't really much of a narrative the combat was very mid 
or below mediocre actually that's immortal or four that's diablo immortal honk i star rail community would devour you alive if you give it a lower rating and i agree about the open world yeah i would give it a ur if it was just open world i feel like it's, it's so close you know it's on the cusp of being a ur quality game but at the end of the day this is also purely subjective so then we have tacked up symphony that was admittedly i the game actually over the course of one month has declined in earnings substantially and people are actually concerned for its longevity because it, it's dropped by such a large margin but it's still like it, very pretty music very pretty game but that kind of felt like it like that that was an r tier quality game for me and i expressed this in video form and there were some people that got very upset with me over that and i know this, this this is gonna this like people are like oh we got the tower fantasy there he is can't wait to see where he ranks it you know we're gonna rank that you are quality that would appease i think the tower fantasy community right they see that there they'd be like all is forgiven but at the same time i could also put this down here and i probably have youtube videos made about me and reddit threads made so then i'm left like oh what do i put it then hmm either way like i'm screwed right it's either ssr or sr it's either one of those so then i'm left like well maybe i'll just be honest about it like i have been with every other gacha game here right tower of fantasy has pretty good looking character models not great pretty good looking i think there are other gacha games out there like azure lane like blue archive like brown dust like nike that have much better looking character models. I think the combat in, in Tower of Fantasy is pretty good. I think there are games out there, action games like Ether Gazer, like Punishing Grey Raven that have better action combat than it. I think that the story is absolute horseshit in Tower of Fantasy. I, I argue anyone to contest the, that opinion and say the story in Tower of Fantasy is great because they're lying to themselves. I think the world in Tower of Fantasy is fantastic. It's beautiful. The later zones, not 1.0. I don't think 1.0 is very good, but especially with Domain 9. Beautiful world to explore. Lots of diversified content. I think it's an MMO. So it's literally the only MMO in this list other than I think Nino Kuni and maybe Summoner's War, but that's kind of debatable. I think Tower of Fantasy is on the cusp of being between SR and SSR quality. I think it's absolutely terrific story and poor management would make it an sr quality game and i think it doesn't like you know it doesn't look as good as some other games and it doesn't play as good as some other games but it does do a lot of things pretty well and therefore i would have it in in the sr category then we have valiant force 2 this is this is like a grid based strategy game that was admittedly really 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 gated behind pay to win i think i made it i played it for like a week and i just i was i had the most miserable experience it had some some hot waifus and that was it like other than that i feel like that sh that game was fucking horrible absolute garbage and then we have the, the two final games wuthering waves one of the most anticipated gotcha games coming in any immediate future in 2023 or 4 i don't know when or 2024 or 5 i mean i don't know when Wuthering Waves has pretty good character models. Uh, it doesn't have, you know, exceptional character models. I think, honestly, Punishing Grey Raven has a more diversified selection of characters that do look prettier. I think Blue Archive, I think Azure Lane, I think Nikkei, I think Reverse 1999 have better looking characters that are more fantasy themed. Whereas Wuthering Waves has characters that are kind of like very simplistic but not not like basic, just simplistic. They don't have like a lot of color to them and therefore seem you know less impactful but the male characters are fucking hot the, the male characters are attractive yeah some of them i think the combat in wuthering waves is probably it has in the top two best combat in the genre hands down there's no contesting that it has phenomenal combat you can just look at the boss fights mrs six and i did on on either in stream footage or on youtube they are oh my god so hard sometimes like scaling the bosses to find weak points the the dodging the parrying the special effects it is just crazy and they have furry then there's the world the world feels about it feels similar to tower fantasy in so that there isn't really like a lot to do in it you can run around you can loot some stuff you can explore now that might change because what we played was the beta test so they might provide some semblance of life to the world but at present, the world was was good. It was fun to explore. 
but it wasn't great. The story in Wuthering Waves left me wondering, like, why did they even bother with this? Because this isn't a story. This is like, this is <coughs> fanfic for punishing Grey Raven made from an eight-year-old, you know? But, but, uh, overall, like, easy SSR tier quality, but it is nowhere near being UR tier. Like, it, it is not. If it releases in the state that it's in, it'll be an SSR tier gacha that does really well, but doesn't, that isn't exceptional, but they have room and time for improvement. Zenless Zone Zero is another gacha game. Like, both of these are gacha games that are upcoming, and I would have, I know people are gonna be like, but what about Project Mugen? You're not gonna talk about that. We're talking about games that I've played personally. So, Zenless Zone Zero, Mr. Six and I played hours of, like, we played a lot of time at the, at a Anime Expo 2023. Zenless had, very like like just just google zenless zone zero nicole they have very attractive characters really good action combat it's not as fast or fluid as something like punishing graven or wuthering waves but i don't think they're they were trying for that it feels more grounded like honkai or genshin than flashy and fantasy it is or at least seems to be hub based the Voice acting seems pretty good. I, admittedly, I, I don't know about the story, but when do Hoyo fail when it comes to story? We've seen that in Honkai, we've seen that in Genshin, we've seen that in Star Rail. I wouldn't expect it to be bad. I think Zenless is an easy SSR. If if Zenless releases, I think as, as fun as it was, it would remain in an SSR, in the SSR bracket, but at the same time, I don't think it would ever breach the UR bracket for me. There's nothing about it that necessarily stands out to a point where it would just be like captivating beyond imagination or like compelling beyond anything I'd ever thought. But Zenless Zone Zero is easily SSR. Absolutely fantastic quality game. And that 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 is my list right there. What do you guys think? Do you guys like generally agree with that? Do you think that I you have a, a very different opinion to me? Like, what are your guys' thoughts here? Now that is it. That is every single gotcha game that I've played that I can remember. I did cover this all on stream. I'd urge you to come on over and join me if it's if it's something you'd want to engage in with me and with the community in the future. Otherwise. If you're disinterested, no problem. I got you covered with two different videos on screen right now. It might be more interest to you.